Hello everyone, it's time for chapter 11 of Snot Stew. We're so excited, it's our last chapter. We're gonna find out all about how the adventure ends. So just to remind you, last chapter, Butch was biting Toby, but we don't know how much of him he's gotten yet. So we know he got a bite. And we know that Toby is in pain and he's stuck in a fence. So let's see what happens. Your focus question for this chapter is what lesson or message was the author trying to teach us in this book? And our two vocabulary words are timid and gauze. So let's find out what happens to poor Toby. Before I even knew what was happening, I was on my feet. Every muscle in my body was tense. My ears were flat against my neck. I charged across the yard and leapt to the picnic table, then to the fence rail. Not once did I even think about falling off. As I raced forward, I stopped above Toby. He was clawing at the ground, screaming and crying. I climbed to the top of the fence and looked down. Butch was there, right behind Toby. He was snarling and growling and chomping. He was eating my brother's tail. Behind me, I heard the back door slam. I heard mother's voice say, What in the world? What is all this racket? Oh my gracious! So here's the illustration, giving you a little hint of what might happen, huh? So there's Kiki jumping. There's Butch the dog. And see, he's got a bite of Toby's tail. So let's see what happens. Butch had chomped his way almost to Toby's rear end. I jumped. All four legs out were out straight. Each claw and each paw stuck out as far as I could make it. My tail spun helping me keep my balance. I hope I'm aiming right, I thought. Then I closed my eyes because I couldn't bear to watch. I felt my long, sharp claws dig into just something. My eyes flashed open. My aim had been good. I landed right where I wanted to, right square on Butch's back. My front claws dug into his floppy black ears. My back paws hung tight to his back. Butch stopped chomping. Toby. I could feel his muscles tense beneath my claws. I dug them deeper. Butch leapt up. I dug my claws in deeper. Yip! Butch barked. Then he took off. Butch yiped and howled and squealed as we raced around the yard. He bounced up and down. I hung on tighter. He howled and shook himself all over. I hung on even tighter. He twisted and turned, but he couldn't reach me. I just hung on. Then I saw Toby's rear end disappear through the fence, hole in the fence. Butch lay down and started to roll over on me. I dug in my claws in as hard as I could. And at the very last second, I let go. I raced as fast as I could for the hole under the fence. Butch didn't chase me, although I didn't know that until I was on the other side of the fence. Only then did I stop and turn to look around. Through the crack, I could see him. The big black monster was still rolling on the ground. He would flip from side to side in the dirt, still trying to rub off the places where my claws had dug in. Mother was crying, Toby, carrying Toby through the back door. I raced after them, but I was too late. She disappeared inside the house, yelling for Daddy. I was panting. My heart was pounding so hard it felt like I was going to come out of my throat. Let me in, I meowed. I want to see Toby. Is he still alive? Let me in. Inside, I could hear her yelling, James, James, help me. No, I've got a towel. Go check on Tic Tac. Daddy came racing to the door. He flung the door open and I trotted to see what had happened to Toby. She's all right, James called from behind me. I guess James was Daddy's other name? I'm not sure because most of the time, Mother called him Daddy. What happened, Daddy James wanted to know. Mother cupped a dish towel under Toby's hind end. That dumb dog of yours caught Rambo. He would have killed him if it wasn't for Tic Tac. Tic Tac hadn't jumped on his back and startled him. Mother looked down at me, then at Daddy James. She's always been such a fraidy cat. So timid and shy and mild-mannered. I couldn't believe she attacked that dog of yours. So this is how her character changed. So in the beginning of the book, she was timid and shy. And by the end of the book, she fought her brother and Butch all in one day.
So let's find out more about what happens. My dog, Daddy James yelped. I'll have you know, Pat, that dog is as much yours as mine. You helped pick him out, remember? You, oh hush, Mother Pat told Daddy James. Rambo's bleeding all over my dish towel and my floor. We'd better get him to the vet. I tried to follow them. I called Toby, but he wouldn't answer me. He kept meowing, stuff about his tail and how he hurt. At the front door, when I tried to go with them, Daddy James shoved me with his foot. I want to go, I meowed. He shut the door. I was worried about Toby. Would he be all right? Would I never see him again? I kept pacing back and forth in front of the door. Meow, meow. I called his name over and over. I heard the car start. The sound moved further and further away down the road. I was so scared, so worried. I couldn't even crawl under my couch and rest in my safe place. All I could do was pace back and forth across the living room. Finally, I crawled up the window. I sat on the windowsill and watched the road. I prayed that they would bring Toby back. At long, long last, my prayers were answered. Mother and Daddy drove up in their car just before the yellow school bus had brought Ben and Sarah home. They carried Toby inside and laid him down in his chair. Mother brought towels and put them under him. Ben and Sarah came in, but Mother and Daddy wouldn't let them mess with Toby. They made them go into the kitchen and do their homework. They said Toby needs to rest. Finally, after Ben and Sarah and Mother and Daddy went into the other room, I jumped down from the windowsill and went to Toby's chair. Toby was almost asleep. He could barely hold his eyes open. Are you okay? I meowed. Toby tried to smile. I think so. He propped himself up on his paws. They gave me a shot to make me rest. I know I'm sleepy. How bad is it? I asked. Toby flopped his head toward his tail. Not too bad. They sewed my tail and wrapped it in white stuff called gauze. So there's one of our vocabulary words. So gauze is like that thick material that they use to wrap when people get hurt. And put sticky stuff called tape on it. But... But, but, Toby stopped and sniffed back a tear. But what? But my tail's gone. Butch ate my tail. I jumped up gently to sit on the chair beside him. Here, I said, lay your head on my paws. Toby lay down and closed his eyes. I'm sorry, I whispered. It's all my fault. It's all my fault. Toby sat up. His sleepy eyes didn't seem sleepy anymore. Your fault. What makes you think that? If it hadn't been for you, Butch would have eaten me. I shook my head. No, it's all my fault. If I hadn't have gotten a fight with you over the stew, if if I hadn't said I hope he gets you, if, if... Toby licked at my ears. Oh, hush that. It wasn't your fault. It was me. If I hadn't been so busy playing snot stew and eating all of your food, then I wouldn't have gotten so fat that I couldn't squeeze through the hole in the fence. Butch would have never gotten me if I hadn't gotten stuck. You saved me. I never knew you were so brave. So there's another good character trait for Kiki. If you hadn't jumped on his back, you know you risked your life to save me. You're the bravest sister in the whole world. He licked my ear for a few more times. Then his sleepy head went kerplop on the, my paws. In the other room, I could hear Ben and Sarah. That's my pencil, Ben snapped. Is not, is to, is not, is to, is not, is to, snot, stew. Toby rolled over. He raised his wobbly head and licked my cheek. I'll never play snot, stew again, he told me. Toby was up and around in no time. He was a different cat after his experience. So you can see where this is a dot, dot, dot. So that means that like some time has passed and now this is telling you what happened after a little while, maybe like a couple weeks or a week or something. So let's see what happened. Toby was nice and easy to get along with. We shared our food. We shared our Ben and our Sarah. We shared everything. Toby didn't tease the big dog anymore. He hardly ever got smart Alec with me and he never pranced around flipping his tail. 
Of course, he didn't have a tail to flip. All he had was a stub. And we never, ever played Snot Stew again. So this is the end of Snot Stew. And this author does have a lot of other books. So if you guys liked it, you could check out one of these books in the library. So just to remind you, our question for the last chapter of Snot Stew was what lesson was the author trying to teach us in the book? So some examples of lessons from other books were to always work hard, to never give up, always be a good friend, um, work hard for your dreams. Okay, so what would be the message or a life lesson for this book? Hope you guys had fun with Snot Stew. I'll see you again soon. Have a good day.